Hello, today I have a teardown video, the Monoprice 40 watt dual port USB-C power adapter. I tear these products apart to investigate how manufacturers are achieving safety and to see what components are being used inside. I've done a few videos like this and the detail I go into is probably a bit different than what others would look at. Every perspective is unique and everyone gets something a little different from watching. Please watch the whole thing and let me know in the comments what I can do better, what I messed up, and if you learned anything by watching the video. All right, so I got pretty curious with this power adapter to see what's inside, and I wanted to know if this thing's basically like two power adapters crammed into one, so I decided we're gonna crack it open. And we have this little uh, claim on the box that it has GAN technology in it, so that's something else we can sniff around in here and see if we can find anything with that name on it. So they're pretty easy to open up. You can see they're using the wiring technique. So they have their two leads running over here and their power adapter setups. And it looks like they did a lot of glue in here, but the glue isn't holding very well. All right, so we're in. And one of the first things I noticed is it has a input capacitor here. This is an X2 rated capacitor. So this is going across the two lines. So this is just some input filtering. We have an actual fuse right here. So this is a little common mode choke, so this is helping with some noise filtering on the input. We see a large capacitor and another capacitor next to it. You can see the, uh, the number there, 400 volts, 27 microfarads. That's a big one. When we look at the bottom side, you can see that input coming in. There's a little slot right here separating things out. This is our bridge rectifier in one chip. And we can see inside the case there's a little light pipe that runs over and connects to that little indicator that was on the front, this little blue LED was very, very dim, very hard to see. But there's a little light pipe that connected over to that. So somewhere on this board, we should see a little LED and there it is. So right there, we actually have the LED. So that's what lights up when you plug it in. We can see our two USB ports. So this is our output board. And as we already know, these two USB ports are actually independently operated. You can see over here, an, actually an optocoupler connecting between the primary and secondary sides. And we can see it's got this plastic shield. This kind of runs throughout the hole inside of this and it runs right through the board. The way they're getting their clearance and creepage requirements on this PCB is by using a plastic shield, physically shielding the primary and secondary sides of the circuit board. So another thing we see when we first open it up is we see these two large capacitors here and they're both fairly heavy duty. This one's got sleeving on it. They actually use two here. And these are our class Y rated capacitors and they look adequate. They have nice spacing between the primary and secondary sides. So when we take a look at our distance here, the closest straight line between the primary and secondary sides is about 6.6 .6 millimeters. So that's not too bad. That's very, very generous. And over here, we have a plastic plate in there. Our closest components are there. Again, that distance is almost exactly the same on this side. We're looking at about 6.6 .6 millimeters of clearance, uh, of creepage, sorry. 6.6 uh, .6 millimeters of creepage, and then they're increasing the clearance by having this physical barrier between the two sides. So the electrical signal has to go up this plastic, over, down, and then connect to the board. And that distance is also far greater than six millimeters. So that's excellent clearance. Again, see a pretty common number there. The spacing between the pins on that optocoupler about 6.6 .6 millimeters. We see up here, ROHS, of course, but we see u -nice. So that must be uh, part of the manufacturer that makes this thing. So this device does in fact have a, a GAN MOSFET right here, which is a combined GAN MOSFET and driver in one chip. So we can see the major advantage of a GAN MOSFET by taking a look at the overall gate energy required to switch. And it's very, very, very low compared to a lot of conventional MOSFETs. And so that means we can switch at much higher frequencies and reduce the size of some of our other components while maintaining the same efficiency levels. One of the other advantages is there is no reverse conduction diode. So the reverse conduction period is zero. So gallium nitride is definitely one of the future technologies that's gonna be pushing these things to smaller sizes and more efficiency levels going forward in the future. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Probably a topic worthy of its own video. All right, so I wanna do a little research on some of the chips that are on the bottom of this thing. It's not too bad. So first we have this chip up here, which is a controller chip, which is a 
uh, basically a flyback controller chip. So this is what's controlling the amount of pulses that are going into this chip over here, which is a GAN MOSFET and driver chip in one package. So one of the things this, this chip has here is it has a the ability to uh, drain the X2 input capacitor and the, they obviously didn't take advantage of that because over here they have uh, resistors to drain this capacitor right here. So if they didn't drain this capacitor, potentially what happens is you can get a shock off of this when you first turn the device off. Uh, I did verify this is a, a TL431. Uh, so this is an adjustable voltage reference essentially and this is used with a few of these support components around here to provide a feedback path through this optocoupler, which I have the data sheet for this as well. And you can see this has an isolation of around 5,000 volts rated, so definitely well within the spec required. These two large wires coming out of the transformer here are feeding into here, and this is a flyback circuit. It has a little controller chip here, and then it has this MOSFET right here. And these two components together are providing a synchronous rectification for the secondary side of this transformer. So just a little bit more efficiency there. And then there's a storage capacitor right here, and then that feeds over to this chip, which is a dual uh, USB-C PD controller with buck capability. And so all buck means is it takes a high voltage and then converts it down to a lower voltage. So basically what happens is this thing over here operates as its own power supply. So this thing's taking the AC mains input and converting it to a steady DC voltage over here. This steady DC voltage is then being converted to 5 volts or 9 volts independently on these two ports by using this chip, this inductor, or this inductor, and these capacitors. So basically, we're taking a higher voltage, intermediate higher voltage, and converting it down to two lower voltages. And it's, it's why we saw in the review video that these two ports are independent of each other because this controller can independently operate this port with this inductor and one of these capacitors and this inductor and one of these capacitors for this port. So because they're independently controlled, we can overload one of these ports and the other one will stay operating no problem. And the primary power supply over here, which is a totally separate circuit, doesn't care what's happening over here because the overload condition is taken care of on this chip over here. We can take a look in here and I did see something that we've seen on when they have wires leading across on here. The wires get pinched on assembly, so there's actually a little bit of exposed metal there. I, I've seen on other adapters where they use a, you know, just a metal pin to connect from here to here, so that way it doesn't have the, the wires that are a potential weak point. And this has a um, safety listing for this component on its own. These two components here, which are 470 picofarad capacitors, both of these also have uh, safety listings, so these are proper rated components. When we look, look at our transformer, we can see that it has an E number on the top. So this is also telling us that this is a safety listed transformer. And also our optocoupler, which we already looked at, has a safety listing. We're covering all the basic components here. So the optocoupler, the transformer, these safety capacitors, these components are all the things that connect the primary side to the secondary side and all of them have a, a, an adequate safety rating. And then all they have to do is take care of making sure that there's enough physical clearance and creepage distance between the two sides of the circuit board to make sure everything is safe. And this adapter certainly checks all those boxes. So overall, this 40 watt monoprice power adapter really checks a, a lot of the boxes on the safety side. It isn't the most efficient adapter and it isn't the best adapter on the market, but it, it really does take into account a lot of features that make it usable and safe. Thanks for watching the teardown of this monoprice power adapter. I was thoroughly surprised by the quality of the layout, spacing, and technology inside of this power adapter. Some thought went into this one, and it shows in the construction. The device does in fact use the gallium nitride MOSFET, as claimed on the packaging. The method of achieving dual USB outputs is novel, and allows both ports to operate independently. The power performance isn't amazing, video link down below, but it is a reasonable step in the right direction. See you soon for more, thanks again, and bye.